That looks like it for the year for our little garden. It was doing so well. This is our horseradish. You can see how wilted it is. Second frost in a week in Arkansas, and it's not even November. This is not good. We are going to have a very cold winter. And here's the potatoes. Oh, look at that. Poor things. They'll be laying on the ground before the end of the day. I'll go in there and probably chop them off and then let the potatoes sit underneath the hay or the straw for a while. Let's take a look at the yard. And you can really see how it is a heavy frost last night. And that's what we call in our yard the frost line. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, unbelievable. Today's what, the uh, 28th of October. I, I've never seen two frosts this early. It's about three hours later, and look at the old horseradish. It bounced back like nothing happened at all. But over here where the potatoes are, <laughs> man, they look like they got hit with a flamethrower. <laughs> I just got back from downtown where I bought a roll of aluminum tape. I bought three plastic uh, dishwashing type containers for the sink. I got a turkey baster. And when I got home, I cut up an, I cut a piece off an old hose that I have. Well, now what the heck am I going to do with all this? Well, let me show you. The old heat pump has decided to act up. And uh, as long as I was running the air conditioner, uh, air conditioner, it was no problem at all. But then I went ahead and started using the heat because it's getting pretty cold down here in Arkansas. As a matter of fact, it went down to 31 degrees here the other night where we live. Well, I came around you know, the, the back of the air conditioner after it had been running for a few hours. And there was water dripping off of all of this here. And there shouldn't have been any water. As you can see, it's just dipped down a little bit, caused the board to warp. So I said, what the heck is causing that, you know? It doesn't make sense. Well, I got a hold of Brendan and I said, uh, you know, what's the deal here? I thought when these things were sitting level, there would be no water drippage. He said, well, it's not. What's happening is that you're in the reverse cycle mode on this thing. You're getting some ice freezing up. And it's after it's uh, you shut it off, the ice is melting and it's dripping, coming out the bottom and dripping and running off here. He said, you're going to have to put a drain pan under that thing. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. If I'd have known that, I'd have done it before the weather got cold. So he said, yeah, you're going to have to go downtown, get your drip pan, put a drain in it, and run the drain outside the building and all that. Well, I think I might have a better idea. I really don't want to run anything through the, you know, bank a hole in the building. I came up with a different idea uh, for that. And But when I went downtown, I couldn't find what I needed. Now, this is 23 inches wide and 11 inches deep. The 11 inches is no problem. Trying to find something that was 23 inches across, that is a problem. That's why I bought three of those pans. We're gonna cut them down, we're gonna tape them together with the aluminum tape. The turkey baster is gonna be part of our drain line from the bottom, and then the hose is gonna to hook to the turkey baster. All of it's gonna be glued inside the pan, and then the hose is gonna run down to a bucket on the floor down here and I'll just have to keep an eye on it and every so often give it a give it an emptying outside you know just toss it out toss the water out the door I don't spend that much time in the shop anyway normally three four hours maximum so it's not like the bucket's going to overflow on me or anything so let's get started on this mess and see if we can actually pull it off well we needed 23 inches and what we have here is from there to partially into the third one, we have our 23 inches. But the curves on the bottom of the containers uh, will make it shorter than that. But we've got plenty. I mean, it goes all the way over here. It actually comes out to all three together actually equals 33 inches. So we have 10 inches to play with, plus the depth of this thing. Ready to go right in the center here. It's 13 inches. So we'll have about an inch and a half to play with there too. Not too shabby. Well, the one that's going to now, I'm going to cut down this side and this side off of this one, cut this middle one out. What we'll do is we'll cut down the sides here and here. Then we'll cut off the sides here and here. And then that'll sit down between them. And we'll close them in together. And when I get them to the right width that I want, we'll just tape it together with aluminum tape. It should be totally waterproof when done. 
Well, here's what we've got so far. So are you beginning to get the drift on what I'm doing? We've got an eight inch gap here now to fill and I'll cut a piece about 10 inches. That'll give me enough overlap on each end. And then this is hanging over enough to where I can put the drain line, okay? Well, she's all put together and I've got 25 inches there, a couple of inches to spare. Let's slide it back under and see what it looks like. Well, it's not too bad. I've got it in as far as I can get it. And uh, I don't think the water will run back there too far. It shouldn't anyway. This thing here being angled helps a lot. The water will run in this direction. The old turkey baster, I may wind up having to use something else besides it, but right now I think it'll do the trick. Take the ball off. I'm going to cut it down until I get to this bottom lip right here. I'm going to take the motor tool and cut that right across like that. Let's see if I can get a little better focus here. And I'm just going to cut it just along the top of that bottom ridge. And then it'll go down in there and the ridge will hold it in. And I'll be able to put some silicone around it. And that should be just about it. Let's cut it. Well, there we go. Perfect fit. Works like a charm. Nice and tight and everything. I kind of hate to remove it to put some silicone around, but I'm going to have to do it. I'm just going to put a little bit of silicone underneath underneath that lip all the way around then just pull it down tight and let it set. And let it set for a couple hours, I guess. I went ahead and put a little bit of silicone around the bottom too. Let's get it up there in the air conditioner and then I'll go in the house. It's coffee time. Well, it's been running for a couple hours. Let's see how warm it is in there. It's not too bad outside here now. It warmed up a little bit with the sun. Ooh, she's nice and warm in here. Oh, this is nice. Now, I like that. Not bad at all. All right, let's go out and the other, look at the back side of it. Well, so far, there's no, uh, no water been formed at all. This is nice and tight now. It's now that the silicone is hardened up pretty good. No water at all, but of course, uh, like Brendan said, it forms ice inside there, and when it melts, after I shut it down, that's when the water comes. But right now, everything's dry. We're good to go. I'm kind of happy about that so far, but I like the fact that it's nice and warm inside the shop. That's good. I decided to go ahead and jack the temperature up to 77 degrees. This is the first real workout it's had as far as, you know, the heat side of the uh, unit. And I'll come out after supper. It's about eh, 4 o'clock right now, quarter after 4. I'm going to go in and make something to eat for us, and then later on after supper, I'll come out and check the temperature again. Real, it, right now, it's nice and toasty warm. It's not hot. It's toasty warm, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, it's the next morning, and we have had another frost. This is the third frost in a row for Arkansas, and it's still not November. Uh, the potatoes, there's no hope for those, but, you know, the old horseradish... I wonder how many frosts this stuff can actually endure and still bounce back. <laughs> Going to be an interesting study here. Well, I let the uh, heat pump run all night long at 71 degrees. And I'm really wanting to test this thing out. So let's see if we have any water. I doubt that we're going to have any water until I actually shut the thing off. Well, there was a lot of drainage. Look at the water down here. See if you can see it. Look at that. This is working like a charm. All right, I'm kind of happy about that. I don't see any water anywhere else leaking along the bottom. Looks like it's angled at just the right angle. This is still nice and solid. I'd say we're good to go. I decided to go ahead and whack off another couple of inches of that hose. It was a little bit too far down in the bucket. We got it a little bit higher. A lot more room now for the water to drain. You know, if that water would have come up, come up and got to the bottom of that hose, it, the hose would have filled up and then it would, it would start fill up all the way here and then it would start dripping out the back. We, we don't want that. So I think we're going to be good to go. And time will tell. Well, there it is guys, living proof. You can't kill a horseradish plant. After three frosts it looks better than it did when it all started. Anyway, I, I got the old scissors out. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and lop off these plants just above ground level. I don't want them to start rotting right there. We'll just let them all rot inside that box and do the soil good. I don't know if we're going to get any potatoes out of this, but we'll find out. 
they, they got a good 90 days of growth, which shouldn't be too bad, and they did bloom. So, I don't know. Probably next week. Today is uh, Sunday. Maybe this coming weekend, I'll paw through there a little bit, give everything a chance to dry out, hopefully. Maybe we'll find a couple. If so, we'll cook them up. If not, no biggie. We'll just leave them in there until next year. I have a stump in my yard that has to go. About a year, a little over a year ago, I cut the, each of the uh, roots out all the way around. I chopped them with an axe. But, you know, the tap root is in there and it's, it's feeding the, the center. So I'm going to whack that baby off and try to hollow it out enough. And later on this year, I'm going to build me a big old fire here and try to get this thing down to ground level. If I can get it down to ground level, I can just keep mowing it. It'll eventually die on its own. Let's see if I can pull this one off. Well, that's about the best I can do. I cut down to where the tap root is. We'll start a fire in there at a later date, and it'll burn around there. Hopefully, it'll kind of maybe separate itself somewhat from the tap root because, like I said, all the rest of them have been cut loose with an axe. We'll see. We're having a little marshmallow roasting party out here, I guess. For those of you who watched my vids, you know that about three weeks ago or so, I had a bout of seven kidney stones, one a day for seven days, that I had to pass. Let me tell you, that was fun and games. <laughs> I was glad when that was over. It happens about every 10 years with me. I think they're mostly calcium. I eat too much ice cream, maybe. I like ice cream, can't help it. Anyway, I wound up at the urologist just to make sure because there was some blood in the urine. And, and uh, my doctor said, you really do need to get your buns down here and get checked by a urologist. So I went and he said, okay, the first thing we're going to do is send you over and get a CT scan of your kidneys and that whole area down there. Uh, I said, okay, uh, I went, you know, I knew it was nothing going, was going to come of it. Sure enough, the CT scan showed no kidney stones at all. Yeah, great, you know, that makes me feel a whole lot better. But the urologist still wasn't satisfied. He wanted to do one more test on me. It is 10 o'clock in the morning on Monday the 30th of October, and I'm on my way to the urologist to have a cystoscopy done. A cystoscopy, oh. You know, that's nothing more than a fancy name that means he's going to take a metal rod and ram it up my crank so he can look around inside my bladder and make sure there's nothing that looks cancerous or no polyps or whatever. I'll tell you what, I am not looking forward to this. But if you're watching this video, it means I somehow survived it.